What up, YouTube squad? What's up, man? What's up, guys? What's up? They're all saying hello as well. We got we got Master Chief hanging out. Hey, hey! See, look at that. Everybody's saying hi to you. Hello. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome to part 22 of Game Sessions of GTA 5 with a Therapist. What am I doing? It's great to have you. Hope you enjoyed part 21. It's great to have you all here. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out, watch the VODs, put a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, check out the merch store, check out the links in the description, all that fun stuff. Let's go. Also, we watched a fabulous movie, and I got copyright struck for watching it. So we will not be watching any of the other videos, unfortunately. The movie got claimed. Anything you can do me in Discord? I'm in Dr. Mix. Yes, uh, Jirith, that's very kind of you to offer, friend. Why do I have a gun out? Nobody here is afraid. Look at this. We got Master Chief. Yo, what up, Master Chief? That is creepy. Is that right? What do you think? Uh, what do you think everybody will do if I deck this guy? You talking shit, Master Chief? <laughs> it would be cool if I could punch him and get his gun. That would be pretty cool. All right, what do we got? I still got to go to the top of the... I still have to go up here and find my way. I don't know. Do we take another shot at it, chat? Do we try one more? One more try with Franklin? I think we do. I think, I think we give it one more college try. Give it one more, one more go. One last score. So how are we doing on let's get the volume up a little bit here. Alright. Alright. I'm gonna laugh my ass off if it turns out there was like a way easier way to God damn it, if there was a oh, way easier way to do this. I can't talk and drive at the same time apparently. But I like to do things the hard way. You know what I'm saying? This is attempt number four, I believe. Yes. Attempt number four. Uh, Mia or any of the mods or Sadie or whoever, if you want to throw a prediction in of will we land it, by all means do it. You can put it in at one minute. Or I guess even two minutes. But will I, will I land this time? Throw that prediction in there. have a little fun with it the hard way is more entertaining I agree am I allowed to bet again of course you are Mary you haven't been banned from the casino you absolutely are welcome to bet again all right here we go Back it up, Franklin. Back it up, buddy. Back it up. He hasn't taken his sunglasses off since we got him, has he? Hey! The house needs to make its money back. That's right. All right. Old Faithful's right here. We're cool. They won't be able to ID me since I had glasses on. This is the run. 
This is the run, chat. Dispatch. I need a location for this guy. Need a location. Uh, he's not at the airport. He's not in the private jet that's about to leave. That's not him. It's, he's not he's not at Los Santos International Airport. It's that's a different guy. The guy, we're just, this is, this is, I gotta, I gotta take my plane. I, I got a sick grandmother in Vegas. Gotta get, gotta get back to her. It's kind of hilarious that the cops don't try to cut me off on the runway. All right, gears up. Jareth, is this taking you back to your days in the Air Force, buddy? Is this what it was like? Was it this exhilarating? This one's for you, buddy. Focus up. That's right. Focus up. That's right. Focus up. Get a little music playing. Pump it through the loudspeaker. Of course, we're listening to the song Dead Air. That's probably not, that's kind of foreboding, if you ask me, but we go with what's on the radio. Can't, can't control the radio. It's not called Dead In The Air, it's just called Dead Air. Top Gun soundtrack would be great, yeah. We gotta climb. We gotta get way up. Cause we have to we have to ditch the plane and then that's gonna get the cops again. So we gotta be we gotta be ready to be cool if we could just go to space. How many feet up are we? About 5,000 feet, looks like. All right, we're getting ready. Getting ready to jump. And out we go. Marbles. I did not thank the bus driver again. Why would you pull your parachute that high? Because I got a long way to go. And I got to make sure I hit the building. Plus it gives us time to just hang out, you know? Enjoy the ride. We didn't attract the cops this time because the plane got dumped in the water. You're the bus driver though, gotta thank yourself. <laughs> and this is good, we're on a good, good solid trajectory here. I mean, this is old hat at this point. Boy, I really took this out over the ocean, didn't I? Yep, good time to hydrate. Good time to check your meds. Repack your vitamin containers. You know, do whatever you gotta do. Go check out Dr. Dot's store. Listen to a new album. Use creator code Dr. Mick at Marbles on uh, stream cap or Captain TV slash Marbles. I mean, do whatever you want. Get yourself some Dauntless snacks. 
you do whatever you got to do while you're while we're waiting here. Yeah, bank a cake, learn a new skill. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, let me hear it in the comments. What did you do while we waited for Franklin to land on top of the Maze Bank Tower? What up, Grizz? Arrived. Love it. Good to see you, buddy. I was down some fireworks, ate some fruit roll-ups. Love it. This is big time. This feels good. This feels like a really good trajectory. All I gotta do is, like, smash into that lit part at the top. I ground up my cannabis. Nice. <laughs> All right, we're coming in. We're getting closer. Getting closer. We're over La Mesa now. Eat all of the Mass Effect trilogy, nice. I did not hear about that slate. I don't really keep up with Minnesota politics. Hmm. All right, Franklin. Moment of truth here, buddy. This would be so much easier to do in a helicopter. Go right at it instead of circling around. Oh, baby. Overshot it by just a little bit. There he is. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to hit the crane again. No! No! Look at that. Just the perfect size for me to just perfectly go around it. Unfreaking believable, man. Absolute pain, man. Absolute pain. Nice and easy, Frank. Just stare forward, buddy. Stare at your target. Oh! <laughs> Maybe this crane's high enough? I don't think it is. Hmm. 
Yeah, damn. And I don't have a parachute this time. Oh, yeah, I do. Look at that. There's a parachute just chilling right there. <laughs> uh, well. So, there's got to be a place to get a helicopter. Got to be. That was gruesome, man. We made it so far. Come on. Oh. Oh, man. All right. What's out of 10? Out of 10. Score that landing. Oh, man. I just. I don't know. All that for. Oh, you meant no disrespect by calling me a goddamn asshole? Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll see about that. You're lucky I gotta turn right. Oh, jeez. All right. It's never gonna happen. Oh, there we go. Prediction is no. Well, I'm sorry, friends. I'm sorry to those of you that voted yes. I'm just surprised there's not a helicopter somewhere in the airfield. I mean, unless you can purchase one, but I doubt I have the amount of money necessary to do that. Woo, too close. It really seems to be all we have left, too. He had messaged... Hold on, he's, he messaged me. I thought he did anyway. Yeah, free climb the maze bank waiting on the roof spiritual. You should hitch a flight up and join me. I need someone to tag in the post. Hitch a flight up. Right, so... This doesn't look like, this is like the opposite of skydiving. I'm just, I'm OSHA. I'm OSHA. I'm not climbing that crane. All right, here's my idea. Here's my idea. Shit, I better go to Trevor. This better be Trevor. Ah, stimulants. Careful, Mikey, you're gonna have to poop. All right, if I go to Trevor. What? And that, in a nutshell, is why trickle-down economics is a load of shit. Agreed. Agreed, Trevor, but that's, uh, okay. Not wrong. So if I'm Trevor, and I take a ride to my home, all right, let me call a cab.
What's up, Dia? Thank you for the raid. Taxi as soon as you can. Not a problem. A driver's on the way. Glad to hear it. Patricia. Patricia. Trevor. Oh, mm, it's good to speak to you. My thoughts are with you. Is he, uh, Martin? Is he treating you well? If you ever. You're a sweet boy, Trevor. A sweet man. Oh, Patricia. I really miss you. I have to go. You just crash into my van? Where can I take you? Take me to... Grand Sonora Desert. Sure thing, man. Interesting to see Dom's That's name right. in the cab. Thanks, dude. A hundred dollar cab ride sounds about right. All right, so now, no, no. Bear with me here. Let's see if I get in this chopper for Trevor Phillips Industries. The TPI chopper. We drive it over to the Maze Bank building. By drive, I mean fly. Maybe. Broder, thank you so much for the seven months. Fly this. You are flying in restricted airspace. Turn around immediately. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to fly over the prison. Sorry. So we're going to drop this off for Franklin. Franklin's going to fly it up to the top. I think only Frank can do it. It's green. I'm doing well, Dia. How was your stream? All right. So we're gonna take we're gonna take this down. We're gonna land it. Let's go right in this. over here in this dog park because that seems like a logical place for a helicopter okay now we're gonna be Trevor we're gonna run over here we're gonna take a little dip in the in the in the pool we're gonna switch to Franklin who shouldn't be too far away right okay good hey I'm going man before you take advantage I guess he changed clothes in the in that time span. Okay. We hop on. This is so elaborate. All this so I can talk to the guy I don't even like at the top of the maze bank tower. I really got to get my priorities straight, fam. We are doing get to the chop up right now. We sure are. I feel like I'm. Alright, I'm way too. God damn it. God damn it. Eh, back it up, Franklin. Go up here. Oh, yo, what's up, folks? Oh boy, going to oncoming traffic. This is ridiculous. Oh my god. No, what am what am I Can you think for just a second, Ryan? Oh! Hey, 
Here we go. We exit here. We gotta hope that it's still there, man. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this with directions. It was on the north side. It was over here, right? I think this might be a little too far north, so we're gonna go down one street. There it is. There's the oh, the dog park's down there. All right, come on, please be there. Please be there. Please reward reward my tenacity, Rockstar. Please. I don't ask for much. I just want one little chopper in the dog park. Just one. Can I get a cab right away? I'm sending one out right now. All right, thanks. Ballsy cab driver I've ever seen in my life, and he just came up. It just came. <laughs> no. Come on. <laughs> I need a cab as soon as possible. Sorry, all the drivers are busy right now. Fuck Please you. Call back later. Come on, no. No! He didn't show- There he is! He's, there he is! Come on! The little taxi cab that could. Come on, buddy. You can get over here. You can get to me. I believe in you. Come on. Come on, buddy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Make your move. Make your move. <laughs> Make your move. <laughs> Yo, brother, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip ever, man. Peel box heel. I'll get you there fast, buddy. <laughs> Dude, you're like the greatest cab driver I've ever had in my life. Oh God. This guy works his ass off. This guy deserves all the credit in the world. Oh, we got any messages from anybody? No. Check my text real quick. Nah. How are my stocks doing? Is that a news article about Dr. F? Wait, was it? Psycho Shrink Dead. Oh, shit. Dr. Isaiah Friedlander, radio host and author who's ro who rose to prominence recently, was killed yesterday in a murder police are calling suspicious. No shit. Dr. Friedlander, who recently won great fame thanks to his bestseller about his relationship with an idiotic, if terrifying, and amusingly deluded sociopath and apparently retired bank robber, he codenames Marky DeSantos. Oh, my God. No one has yet identified the real Mr. DeSantos, and people are unsure if he's even alive. Only last week, Dr. Freelander spoke to an audience about the futility of trying to work with the criminally insane and deluded. 
He argued that some people are truly beyond help. It seems that someone certainly wanted their money back, although whatever it is for the, whether it was for the book or the treatment remains very unclear. Yikes. Everything about that's terrible. Who killed Leandra Johnson? On January 17th, 7, 1975, the dismembered, mutilated body of young Videwood starlet, Leon, Leon, oh, Leonora, not Leandra, Leonora, I can't read. Leonora Johnson was discovered by the side of the Land Act Dam following an anonymous tip-off to the LSPD. Her killer was never found. It's become the great unsolved murder of the 20th century and an unhealthy obsession of mine for my entire adult life. I don't know what first drew me to Leonora. Something about that auburn hair, those green eyes, the sad smile, the photos of her skinny dipping that her uncle sold to the Los Santos meteor the day after her death. A jaded detective in the episode of The Science of Crime once told his stereotypically cocksure younger partner, know the victim and you will find the killer. And I've sacrificed 30 years, two marriages, a promising career as a photocopier salesman to knowing Leonora in every way imaginable. Some that I'm not proud of, but I will uncover the truth. Why were the police so slow to react? Why was the case closed so quickly? Why did the murderer disfigure the body in such a horrific and deliberate way? Where was my consultant credit on the movie adaptation? I know they used the site for research. Still today, there are so many more questions than answers. My beautiful, vulnerable Leonora, I won't let you down like all the others. I won't forget. How can I? My basement is wallpapered with pictures of you. One of the reasons I lost the photocopying job. I won't stop until justice is served. Big breakthrough. Confession letter confirmed. In a recent interview, Ira Richards, son of movie maker Solomon Richards, claimed he remembers his grandfather David Richards in a drunken stupor one time ranting about a confession that had to be torn up and hidden throughout Los Santos in the late 1970s as an insurance to protect those who knew too much. What we know. Oh, Jesus. Main players. I've been through enough libel cases to know that I can't refer to them as suspects anymore. <laughs> Mitch Dexter. Holy shit, there's a lot going on here. The Atheist Society, My Room, Vanilla Unicorn, Monetary Science. Jack Cranley, conservative candidate for governor of San Andreas. If you're over the age of 40, you probably remember me from that hit 1980s television show Stunt Double, where my character performed amazing stunts while solving crimes that also happened inexplicably near the movie set in the show. I died for a living on TV. It was a life of leading ladies in danger, but now my leading lady is Lady Liberty. The danger is what liberals are doing to this country, and I want to be your governor. Who do you trust to lead your state in the right direction? A stuffed shirt with years of study and training behind him and an understanding of civics, or a man who's jumped out of a flaming car careening off a cliff onto a hang glider? I thought so. Boy, if this isn't too real. San Andreas has been to hell and back. I have too. I used to spend my Sunday mornings finishing off the cocaine from Saturday night. Now I go to church. I used to attend group sex party. Now I believe in masturbation is adultery. I used to smoke on television and exploit my fame and personal wealth to lure college students to hotel rooms. Now I use my acting skills in politics. Are you a true patriot? Take the test here. How do you spend the 4th of July? This is apt. Reading the U.S. Constitution and chanting USA while giving an immigrant the finger. Barbecuing and getting wasted with well-connected, blue-blooded friends. Taking a dump on the American flag by watching lamestream media. Oh my god. Barbecuing and getting wasted, I guess. You see an Indian man with a backpack sweating on the bus. This is terrible. Do you tackle him to the ground screaming red scare, engine alert, even though he comes from Delhi? Oh my god. Wonder aloud how you failed so miserably in life to take the bus. Yikes. Yikes. Hug him and offer him your seat. What should be the most important subject in the school curriculum? Teaching the controversy of how monkeys aren't our cousins. English, American, not British, which we all know sounds pretty fruity. Oh my god. Composting your own feces and organic gardening. This is terrible. This is all terrible. 
When you see an image of dead polar bear on a melted ice cap, it reminds you to change the channel to Weasel News and renew your hunting license. Reminds you to recycle and volunteer at homeless shelters. Reminds you to go and car bomb an oil company executive. How do you view the war on terror? A gift of democracy to the uncivilized world in exchange for oil we badly need. A complex situation with no easy solution. A power grab by greedy corporations in the banks. You see two men holding hands in the park, do you? Hand them a pamphlet on reversing identity disorders. Yikes. Take a pic for your bleeder with the caption, yuck. Yikes. Smile and tell them that their love is an inspiration to us all. That's also a yikes, but we're going to do that one. What is your favorite sport? Hunting endangered animals from dune buggies drunk on piss wesser. Tennis or golf, running, yoga, and hopscotch. You discover that a man living on your street is an illegal immigrant. Take him down as a preemptive strike to protect your family and freedom. Move to a better neighborhood. Bake a cake, knock on his door, and welcome him to America. Get results. Mostly C's. Another weak-minded freedom hater who's fallen for the un-American, unconstitutional propaganda of the secular media. Instead of protecting our great nation from the enemies who do attack the values and liberties we hold dear, you'd rather take away our flamethrowers and assault rifles and throw open our borders to anyone who wants to stick their mucky hand in the sweet, moist honeypot that is Sweet Lady Liberty's coochie. <laughs> oh my god. It's so terrible. You're a disgrace to our great nation. If you hate America so much, get the fuck out and go live in France. Part of it is in Canada. Or vote Jack Cranley and turn your life around now. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh. Okay. So, this is not far from reality, unfortunately. It's really easy for people to instantly hate on people who consume that media and believe it your hatred and your pressure is far better exerted towards the people who create that media because for some people this is literally what they consume it's the only representation they have you see that in a one off and you might laugh at it but if you start to see that stuff over and over and over and over and over and over and you only get a single story, you only get information that moves in a certain direction and it's a direction that's designed to elicit an emotional response from you, all of a sudden you start to believe that you're constantly under attack. And you get scared. And you follow people who seem to be very confident in their ability to get you through that fear and to solve those problems that have been created and curated to make you seem like they're a threat to you. Like This stuff is really scary, and if you just sit there and you laugh at people who consume that and, and take it in, you're missing the point. That is designed in a very specific way to get a very particular response from people. And if you're a person that doesn't have education or a diversity of representation in your life, you don't know any different. Something else that I'll say about this is uh, when you create a dogma that exists around emotion, it is always going to be more intense, more simplistic, but also more easy to understand than when you build it around science and intellect and gray areas and progression 
Like the reason being progressive is anxiety inducing to so many people and why they argue against it is because it represents change and change is not easy. The older you get, the harder it is to change, the more we have to come out of our foxholes. But also when you couple these things with emotion, you will often see that that emotion gets directed to places that you're told to direct it to because you don't have a healthy way of managing it. And one of the ways that some people will, will shift their energy is to literally just take the polar opposite opinion or stance of a person that they perceive to be a threat to them. There's not actually a belief system there. It's a counter belief system. You ask a person where they fall on something like climate change, they may not know until they hear somebody that they perceive as being on the other side, give their opinion, and then they'll go for the opposite. If you find yourself consistently being in a reactionary space with your understanding of stuff, there's a good chance you're missing the mark in ways that are actually detrimental to you. It's not easy to take a progressive outlook on the human experience. It's difficult. And it's anxiety inducing. And when you have the wrong people taking that anxiety and using it against you, you start to make decisions that are against your own uh, benefit, really. You wonder how people end up in certain spaces. It's not because of one-off things like that survey. It's because of an amalgam of information that is condensed into one streamlined format that's easy to consume, and it's consistent, and it's reliable, and it's confident. Humans naturally gravitate toward that. JG Wentworth, thank you for the 25 bits. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now and you just gave me 25 bits. I didn't even have to call you. 877 cash now. Okay. So he literally just dropped me off at the maze bank building. They've helped thousands, they'll help you too. Twenty-five bits of cash they will pay to you. Do, 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 do. Some of the catchiest commercials on TV, man. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Get to the top. Yeah, all right. This is just not happening tonight. Couldn't get Trevor's helicopter. Alt. Don't get all hysterical, honey. All right, Mikey. Oh my God. Yeah, run. Holy shit, that guy just... Where's this guy going? How's it feel? That'll teach him to hit random people on the street. This ain't my car, I don't give a shit. and bees return is Michael to start this this has been a shit show what have I been playing for like what 40 minutes 
He better be close here. Hey, baby, you looking for a date? No thanks, gorgeous. I'm happily married now. Good for you, Mike. You could have just said no. I don't really think she gives a shit if you're married, but... I'm gonna flaunt it. No, I'm not going to get a sex worker into my car. I respect Mikey's boundaries. Alrighty, here we go. Change into your tuxedo. Dad, I'll be at Ponsby soon. I've got a ride. You better get a badass tux. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Tuxedo. That's all we get? Just, that's all we got. One tux. I guess every tuxedo is basically the same, right? Going to the premiere. Hell yeah. Meet with Jimmy in the middle of the night. Premiere's in the middle of the night here. Make sure the you producer decided yes. to jump to the premiere. Come on. The tuxedo shorts. Yes. That's how you do it, Jimmy. That's how you do it, buddy. I'm proud of you, son. Stretch limo. Oh, that's pure class, Jim. Vinewood Boulevard, the Oriental Theater. Open that champagne, Jimbo. Woohoo! Me and the big dog getting our drink on. Hey, hey, where you going with that? Woo! My dad's a movie producer! Jimmy, get back down here. Which makes me a movie producer's kid. Jimmy! I'm gonna ride out the next two recessions without ever having to work. And I'm gonna get a sports car and a drug habit before appearing on Reality Rehab Show. And then I'm gonna sell my story and become really judgmental. <laughs> Very well thought out, Jim. Use all the contacts I make in treatment programs to become a producer too. And I'm gonna make even shittier movies than my dad does, cause I don't care about movies like him. For me, it's just an opportunity thing. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! You see the streets edge losers? Jizzle in the movie bizzle. Hear that, Vinewood? You hear that, Vinewood? I think they hear it, Jimmy. I think they hear it. Nerdon, thank hey, you for the raid. I hear it, and I don't like it. We're going to the Oriental Theater on Vinewood Boulevard. Get back down here. And not to... So despite the fact that what Jimmy's saying may sound pretentious, it actually makes complete sense. Because of how Jimmy's grown up. I mean, essentially, Jimmy's entire identity, as it relates to, like, work and money, is that he's just Michael's son. It's all been handed to him. So here it is yet again. Like, this is more of what Jimmy is used to. Jimmy freaks out when you say things like, you gotta get a job, Jim. But his dad making a movie and him learning that he has clout by association, that's right up Jimmy's alley. So it, it honestly makes complete sense why he'd be celebrating this. Maybe even more than Michael. This is new for Michael. It's not really new for Jimmy. He's just riding down Mike's coattails. That's all he's known his entire life. You want to talk about the single story we were talking about earlier in the stream? Jimmy hasn't had a diversified representation of what it looks like to acquire wealth and resources. Jimmy's entire orientation toward it, his dad makes a bunch of money, brings it home, and he spends it. And if we get mad at Jimmy for that, again, we're missing the mark. That's all Jimmy knows. So, you know, Mike's got a 
tidy this up with Jimmy if he really wants Jimmy to have any chance. But for now, of course, Jimmy's more excited about this. He's the one that's going to benefit from it more than anybody else. Like, gawk at celebrities from behind a barrier. We're actually, like, properly invited. V to the I to the P. Jimmy! Read my neck rolls in time. Now, what this also reinforces from a relationship standpoint, and I think this is a little bit less obvious when you watch this, is that it reinforces that Jimmy is proud of, connected to, excited about Michael as his dad when Michael does something that brings in resources. Not by being emotionally connected and available to him that way. So for Michael, if he's not careful, this is going to be exciting to him too because he gets to have this moment where his son is essentially proud to be his son. And that's what Michael wants, particularly in the vulnerable position he's in right now because he keeps trying to say, I'm going to go back to my family. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. Well, this is going to falsely reinforce that this is the stuff that Michael needs to do in order to gain favor with his family. So Michael's got a lot of work to do in terms of making the effort to connect with Jimmy in other ways rather than just with bringing in resources and being famous if he wants any hope of having a long-term relationship with him. Titled E-N-T. Uh, titled, because I am Jimmy. Oh, Pop, chill. I'm done spraying this shizzle. Let's take a drink. Jimmy, shut up a second. Hey, Devin, look, I need to say about Molly, man, I'm sorry, but I didn't do it. I told you to slow it down, slick. It was an accident. I was there, but I had nothing to do with it. Sure, yeah, hey, you made a fool out of me, Michael, and that is something I'm not gonna forget. Look, Devin, I said I'm sorry. I feel bad for you, but you don't threaten me, because this movie's happening, all right? So let's just calm down and try to be friends again. Oh, absolutely, Slick. Forgive and forget. Namaste. Hey, we're here. Of course there's fireworks in the game. Go to the red carpet. Oh, hell yeah. Pop, you know, I'm really proud of you, even though you did make a pretty shitty movie. This is intoxicating for humans. What we're about to do. Unconditional, unrelenting reinforcement like this, particularly in the early stages, if it's not something that you've gotten used to and take for granted, is wild. When you have crowds of people that are excited about your presence, it ticks an evolutionary box in our brains. I am safe because I have the adoration of an entire group of people. And the more socially acceptable I am, the more people adore me, the more likely I am to be accepted into groups, and the more likely I am to survive. Like any of these things that we see that are all glamorous and whatever, if you ask yourself, what's the evolutionary process behind this? It usually connects to survival in some way, shape, or form. So this may freak some people out because you don't know how to anticipate it. And if you were just thrust into this situation, it would make a lot of sense. But Michael has made a life out of being in the spotlight in one way or another. Now, it is false. It's not. These are people that are appreciating Michael for reasons that go beyond his core of who he is. It's, it's idealization. It's projection. It's the whole nine yards. Like, this is an actual, like, deep, meaningful social reinforcement. But it is social reinforcement nonetheless. And people get swept up in this in a big way. And oftentimes will start doing things that they never imagined they would do because they're receiving so much adoration for it. Well, thank you, Jim. Where are the girls? Uh, they're at home. You know, they'll uh, express their pride by showing up really late. Uh, of course they will. Are you joking me? 
Come on, man. Listen, Milton and Charlie both did their, their piece. No, I'm not coming over there. Are you joking me? This is ridiculous. You delivered to my clients. I Thanks, Antonio. Give me nice and tight. Oh, boy. Peach Laszlo on the red carpet of Meltdown. Some big stars, some beautiful dresses. We're going to see some side boot tonight. Come on. We did it. Solomon. We fucking did it. Fucking A. <laughs> Fuck you, fate. I may be a lecherous old has-been, but I'm a has-been with a premiere at the Oriental Theater on Vinewood Boulevard. I'll see you in there, kid. Hey, thanks. Enjoy the picture, everyone! Mr. Richards, Mr. Richards, hi. If I could just bother you for a second. Um, I'm Laszlo from uh, Fame or Shame, um, but I do some acting on the side. I was wondering if... Uh... Oh, yeah, of course. You should come see me, kid. I think I got a project that would be perfect for you. Oh, that's fantastic. It's called The Closet. Really modern stuff. <laughs> Pervert. Come on. No, 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 no. Let's go She's over here. lying, okay? I never had surgery. Come on. Milton, Milton, hi. Sorry to bother you. Quick question. Get in here tight. Um, love, love, loved the movie. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. When, when you were that polar bear and you had to eat your baby, I mean, that okay. was... Okay. All right, Jesus Christ. That was emotional. Can I just have a hug? Okay. That really affected me. All right, I gotta go. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Excuse me. Come on. Come on, let's get in there. Ah, Laszlo. Oh, shit. Come on, shit dick. So, there's a... Speaking of real reasons why people are attracted to these sorts of things, there's also a very real reason why people who are in the crowd care about this stuff. A lot of times people will be like, who gives a shit what a bunch of people who make millions of dollars give each other awards for? And in some ways, like, if you really think about it, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Like, who, really? Is it consequential on anything? No, not really. But... When you jump into evolutionary psychology and sociology, it does start to make sense because you are seeing people who have acquired significant amounts of resources doing something that has the interest of massive groups of people. And what a lot of folks will do is they will project these wishful identification traits into not necessarily this specific moment, but into things like this. You see this with movies and celebrities. You see this with athletes. You see this with people who are perceived to be the top of whatever craft it is that they have. But we take that and we think if, if they can do it, maybe there's some part of me deep down that either has or had the potential to be in this certain space. Sometimes it'll, we'll try to make ourselves feel better about our own insecurities by picking things on people who we perceive to be more successful than us because it feels good to break them down to equalize it psychologically some people look at these things and get all excited and just full on about it because this is something that represents an ideal that so many of us have represented to us consistently particularly in places like the u.s so these are all just microcosms of processes that hundreds and thousands of years ago they didn't look like this but this stuff mattered from a survival standpoint and this is why it's such a such a guttural draw sometimes people will even hate watch these things just because there's just there's this pull to engage with it we can't escape our brains and evolutionary biology and psychology as much as we might want to it's pretty fascinating stuff <laughs> Where the, hell is no, the dresses are a wrecking like are a reflection of wealth and resources oh, all that stuff I wouldn't miss this for the world. oh yeah. boy the fuck are you doing here hey what a movie huh meltdown congratulations mikey we did it hey let's get a picture huh you me the proud producer such a pleasure working with you you see i was here unlike your wife seems to be stuck at home <laughs> uh -oh. You twisted fuck! You're a dead man! Let's go, Jim. Come on! W what's happening? Where's mom? Come on. The girls might be in trouble at the house. Let's take the Lambo. You got two minutes to sacrifice yourself for your family, dickhead. Oh, jeez. 
What happened? I don't know. This rich asshole is pissed off at me because I didn't shit can the movie. And then his lawyer died, and, and he just told me he's gonna hurt your mom. You killed his lawyer? And now he's gonna kill mom and Tracy? He ain't gonna do anything if I got a say in it. But you fucking killed his lawyer? No, I didn't. It was an accident. I would never do anything to put you in danger. Shit. All right. Okay. They'll be fine. Not intentionally. You're tough. This is just a movie guy, right? He, he's not a gangster or anything. No, he's not a gangster. He's just extremely rich. He says he's... Damn! He's got all these connections. I'm sure it's just talk. Come on! Come on! Yes, absolutely, Zol. Ecto, thank you for the raid, buddy. Shit, what's that car? All right, Jimmy, you gotta hide. I'm gonna find the girls. Be careful, Dad. Holy shit. Thanks for the reminder, Jimmy. I wasn't gonna be careful until you said that. Stay here. Keep your heads down. Be safe, baby. Don't you worry about me. Clear the house! All occupants! Yeah, oh my god, this is Merryweather? Holy shit. Frag out! Oh, Jesus! Not yet! Stay put! Just chucking grenades into my house? Neither do I. Just keep calm. Man, paramilitary, and they just can't take one guy out. I'm fine, Trace. You just stay down, sweetie. Oh. No one's gonna kill you. Daddy's got this. He's hit. He I told you to there. fuck off. Drop the weapon. No. You first, buddy. Holy shit, man. Who's got my back? I need cover. Boy, these guys, if you don't hit them with headshots, they are really tough to kill. Of course that's the guy. Of course that's a guy I die to. Of course. Clear the building! Man, no I tell you, leaves! I feel like I'm pretty good at shooting in this game, and I die a lot. How on earth? Not yet. They put. They got Sanchez. DW said the asset. I don't like this, Michael. Neither do I. Just keep. Call. Let's go, motherfucker! Daddy? Are you okay? I'm fine, Trace. You just stay down, sweetie. Come on! They're going to kill us, Daddy! No one's gonna kill you. Daddy's got this. Oh, By the way, quick tip. Rather than saying keep calm, you should give people directives that are more behaviorally based. So say something like, focus on your breath, stay down, stay with each other, focus on something in the room, something like that is gonna be a better option than telling people to stay calm because there's so many different ways that people can stay calm. So if you, it, that usually means a certain amount of behaviors. Now I realize I'm in the middle of a gunfight, so Michael's not gonna be like, okay, now make sure you go in through the nose, hold it out through the mouth. But when you're not in a gunfight, like in real life, next time you wanna say to somebody, stay calm, Give them an alternative directive that's a little bit more operational than just stay calm. I'm gonna shut down your neck. That's a weird. Get in cover! They got me pissed. Yes. Stand down. This is it. Colorado down. I 
There's health in the kitchen. Grab that. You guys are coming out of clown cars. Trevor with the bong! Or is this Jimmy? This is Jimmy. This is awesome. <laughs> nice job, Jimmy. Yeah, you like that, don't you, huh? Teabag him! Yeah, teabag him! So you sit on his face? It's called teabagging? I really fucked him up good, though, huh? Alright, listen, I'm gonna make a call. It's all gonna be okay. Stay put. So good, man. It's so good. Nice job, Jimmy. Way to use all your training. They came to my house, Lester. My house. So I asked Amanda and the kids to move out for a few days. Uh, I hate to say it, but Merriweather isn't short on excuses to come and kill you, nor is Devin Weston. I ain't looking for perspective, Lester. They came after my family. It's kind of an interesting little interaction there. Lester is missing tact sometimes. This, I think, is the importance of asking people when they're clearly struggling with something what they need. So Michael calls Lester. He's talking about what's going on. If you're Lester, you're probably good to say something like, so what are you needing from me, Michael, what, right now? You needing advice, perspective, or you just need somebody to listen to? To you. That is not a bad habit to get into, friends. Because it allows a person to name exactly what their expectations are, and you can stick to them. Instead of making it about what you think they need, you can respond to them in a way that they feel understood and heard, which is ideal. Way too often listeners, when hearing something that somebody's talking about that makes them anxious, will make it about them. So Lester there might say like, so what do you need from me, Michael? And it would make a huge difference on this conversation instead of immediately giving perspective that Michael doesn't really need. You see it escalate him. And he even says, I don't need perspective, Lester. So now Lester just misfired. You want to get better at communicating, inject some of those questions in. Make it about the person you're listening to, not about yourself. It goes a long way, and you'll find that people often will share more with you as a result of that. All right, 
right, right. Uh, I don't know what to say. Does this change where you stand on the Union Depository? Hell no. We move on that right away. Before it gets any hotter. Uh, that's smart. Uh, meet me at the strip joint. I'll get word to Frank and Trevor. Right. Hey, Matt. Damn, are we doing this? Probably a smart move to tell Amanda and Jimmy and everybody to go away. Is that you, Jesus? I don't mean that. I mean, how's it hanging, man? Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Oh, I'd love a latte. Oh, maybe I'll make some out of water or something, or, or some sushi, or some herby focaccia. Oh, man, it's totally rad, man. It's totally rad. Michael, did you find them? Who? The person who sent the mercenaries to our house. I'm working on it. Are we safe? You said we would be safe. He's not gonna try that again. I'm on top of this, Amanda. Trust me. Really? You're sure? I'm positive. Look, I love you, baby. I'm gonna take care of this. Perfect little micro example of what we talked about 20 minutes ago when people are scared or anxious they will look to people who can confidently cut through that and we call this external reassurance seeking sometimes other times it's just you need somebody to steer you through it so Amanda is clearly terrified and she's banking on Michael being stoic and clear and confident. She is in an immensely vulnerable position that Michael, if he's not careful, can take massive advantage of. This is how you get people into subordinate positions where you can manipulate them. This is where abusers operate fully. By essentially having a person so scared and being so confident that they have the solution that they can then manipulate. I'm not saying Michael's going to do that, but this just presents that as like a follow-up to what we talked about on a grander scale. This is the micro version of that. If Michael is... It, now, it puts Michael in a bit of an awkward position because if Michael is afraid and Michael doesn't know how to handle this, if he says that to Amanda, it's going to escalate her anxiety. But his anxiety is also valid. So you have a lot of anxiety happening here with one person very clearly being seen as the bastion of control and handling this. And Amanda's looking to Michael for that. It's okay to do that a little bit, but we also wouldn't want to have that happen excessively in multiple instances because it'll reinforce that Amanda can't take care of herself. Yo, Jesus, you came at a perfect time for me, brother. What's up, Jesse? You know it's rough out there, man, but you gotta have faith, man. All right? It's, everything's gonna be okay. Like the therapist above says, man, it's gonna be okay. All right? You gotta chill the hell out, man. All right? Otherwise, it's not gonna be too good. You gotta enjoy life. All right? Because the alternative is not so good. Not so good, man. Is that right, Jesse? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I guess. All right. Good luck with that therapy. Sure, big mama. Any souvenir you... Oh, so, like, the alternative to play. life, man, is death. And the interesting thing is that, well, life is cool. Oh, okay, big... Speaking of something people follow when scared. All come together. That's going to be the theme tonight, apparently. Jesus religious figures, religion itself, spirituality. These are all constructs that are designed to help 
alleviate the fear of so many unknowns of what it is to be a human. Afraid of what happens when you die? Look no further than heaven. Here's a construct for you to put your eggs into that basket so that you have something that you can expect will happen during the ultimate unexpected. We're all scared. Shit's hitting the fan. Who is a figure that speaks confidently? Who has ideas? Who makes abstract connections that if we pay enough attention will make sense, but if we pay too much attention won't? Who we can latch onto and follow through the dark? Don't ever underestimate the power this has, man. We've got we have entire groups of people who follow very specific doctrines because of this very simple fact that when there's a bunch of unknowns in life, a bunch of things that make us scared, having clarity is mwah. And then when you get social reinforcement around it, you start getting a lot of people that join that same doctrine. Oh, oh baby. You're rocking and rolling. Then you don't even have to think for yourself. You could you could be have things thought for you, and then you could just latch onto them. You get to a point where you're a follower in thought. Beyond just action. It's powerful stuff. But so is death, man. I mean, life is like a crazy mind fuck. And then death. Well, yeah. I mean, that's like a crazy mind fuck too, man. It's outrageous praise. Oh man, it's so rad. Cool that you made a necklace of yourself, dude. So, man, I mean, I was sent here to clear things up. And it's not that people don't understand. It's just that people don't understand. I mean, like, hey, you know, you got to do the right things, not the lame things. It's like when you get 10 coffees, okay? And then you get the stickers that say you get a totally free one, man. I mean, that's outrageous. Ugh. Pretty outrageous, man. Life can be pretty cool sometimes, huh? He seemed like a kind person. Trace? Daddy! Are you okay? Yeah, sure. Why not? Cause some guys came to our house with automatic weapons, maybe? I'm dealing with that, honey. You don't need to worry. Money doesn't matter when you're dead, Daddy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. One of the ways that you can determine a person's attachment figures is... Who do they seek proximity to in times of stress and adversity? This has very clearly put some things into perspective for the family. Everybody's reaching out to Michael. Tracy is looking for her emotional needs to be met by Michael now, not just monetary needs, to the point that she even says money doesn't matter when you're dead, which is something that... I think people should hear more often. You, I used to hear all the time, you can't take it with you. You can't take the money with you. So, I'm not saying that Tracy has a secure attachment to Michael. What I'm saying is that Michael is being shown to be an attachment figure because she's in proximity to Amanda, but she's still calling Michael. One, to check in on him, but two, and you can hear it in her voice, to assuage some of the anxiety that she's experiencing about this situation. Yeah. So these kind of these kind of moments, this is kind of like when a heart attack scares somebody into going to the doctor. You get this adverse experience, and all of a sudden we start connecting. What are you doing?
see that blue dot there. Don't worry, guys. I'm okay. It hurt a little bit, but I'm okay. That's how you know I'm okay. I did get thrown through the windshield, yes. Michael needs to wear his seatbelt. Oh, God, it almost happened again. Sir. Boy Mike. Good what up? See you. How to duty. The saints and struggle, lost scandals, sin and trouble. Word. I lost count of how many boobies I seen. Jesus, Wade, you're still going at it, buddy? Holy cow. Damn, I need a drink. Hell Can't exit the car quickly, but it's true. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, we were just talking about you. Well, don't worry. Another few hours, you never have to talk about me again, Trevor. You're the one who likes to talk. Watch your back. You too. That's all I'm saying. Fuck you. Fuck you, all right, excuse all right, all me, right, huh? Enough! enough. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is it. Well, we have two options. They're both a little, uh, out there. But then again, what do you expect? Okay, option one. We hijack their armored cars. We take the crews hostage. And then we infiltrate the depository. Now, once you're in there and you've got the score, we send in a team of modded cars. You load up, you get out. And we'll need to infiltrate the transportation grid and manipulate it to aid our escape. But option two, we cause a distraction out front. Make them think we're... Dumb. <laughs> well, we've never had a problem convincing people of that, have we? <laughs> the other guys will be drilling, taking what they can. You're gonna be the distraction. Always the attention seeker. You know, for a guy who's always stepping on his friends to get ahead, he has an unfortunately low sense of self-worth. Okay, okay, let me show you the board. To uh, recap, these are our options. We try to make them give us the gold, or we drill a big old hole in the side of the bank and we take it out. If you're drilling a big old hole, you'll need a big old drill, a tunnel bore machine. I'll locate it, but you have to steal it and store it near the bank. Uh, they're excavating a new part of the metro network around there, so that's where you'll go in. Uh, we'll need choppers for the getaway, too. Uh, Trevor has one we can use. The other can be bought. The guys on the ground will need a getaway car, so get something fast and tough and then modify it as much as you can to increase your chances of getting away from the cops. And it's got to be stored in a parking garage near the UD. Uh, there's going to be a lot of heat, so think about that. Um, or I'm forgetting something. Uh, oh, that's it. <laughs> we'll need a train to land the gold on and take it to the warehouse. You'll have to steal it uh, again. I'll send you the details. Now, if you're interested in the more um, subtle approach, hijacking the armored cars and so on, huh, you've got to get some police stingers. Only cops are licensed to have them, so that's a headache of its own. Uh, what else? Um, oh, right, uh, you'll need to get a hold of and mod some getaway cars. Uh, normal suspension's gonna give out under a couple of tons of gold. Whoa, man, a couple of tons? Four tons in total. <laughs> and that's what I can get the system to divert into the cage we're hitting. Fuck me! Okay, okay, last thing. You remember that underpass we saw from the helicopter? Well, that's where I'll set up the uh, smoke and mirrors to get the cops off your scent. I've heard that before. Michael, subtle or obvious, what's it going to be? You know I'm getting that drill. You know I'm about to get that drill and get into the get into the helicopter. Mm. 
What's it gonna be? I want to, yeah, man. I don't know. There's a lot of moving parts here, but the parts are good. There's there's less moving parts here, but what we don't know. Oh man. I want the drill. <laughs> Hmm. Um, all right. Uh, we're going through the wall, so we'll just need a skeleton crew. <laughs> okay, um, two gunmen and two drivers. The first driver will pilot one of the choppers getting you out of there. Half the gold will be in that chopper, so these better be some safe effing hands. And the second driver's in charge of the train. I don't think we need to hire someone very expensive for this. We're all waiting! Well, Eddie's definitely coming, because look at those stats. This girl, Taliana. She's supposed to be good, and she'll work for way less than she's worth, if you believe that. Yeah, we're taking her. I'm not gonna pass her up. Gunman 1 is with Franklin, burrowing in and pulling out the gold. Gunman 2 hits the bank lobby with you and makes it look like you're a couple of idiots trying your luck. All right, we'll take Jobs Gustavo. Jobs for the bureau team. Honestly, we're, we're, I'm taking the best we can get. I'm not messing around with this. This is the big one. Is there anything you want to go over? Nope. Great. All right. We get the tunnel bore machine, and we're good to go. Fucking glory seeker. Oh, you got any better ideas? Obviously not, otherwise you already killed me and done the gig yourself. I mean, what kind of vain asshole decides that the best way to rob the largest holding bank on the West Coast is for him and him personally to come at the front door. The kind of vain asshole who's stuck working with you, you douchebag. Okay, all right, all right, ladies. We gotta move, come on. Man, can we fucking do this? I'll show you what you need. What's good? Word. I am blown away that there is not more of a imperative from franklin and lester for michael and trevor to get their shit figured out like i know i know i've said this a thousand times already and i made it very clear in the last stream but like it, it is unacceptable given what we are doing i am not putting my life at risk if i got two people putting their personal beef in front of everything we do i have a set that trevor was probably going to give michael shit for any decision he made there kind of tease him up for it right he's pushing he's like michael make the choice make the choice make the choice make the choice and then make the choice so that i can dump on you for it so that i can defer the accountability over to you if this goes wrong or when it goes wrong it's your fault because this is the one that you chose it it deflects some of the accountability from trevor it's not a particularly subtle move but it's also a pretty big move from a power dynamic standpoint He's sort of le pulling certain strings to make sure that Michael has power when it's advantageous to him. And by him, I mean Trevor. And taking control when it's advantageous to Trevor to do so. And Trevor's really good at this. But right now, because he's got beef with Michael, not as great. Also, can we talk about how the strip club has a dick on the floor? Post that to mildly penis on Reddit. That CD of my shit that I gave you? you gotta give me they some only play the like six songs here. It's kind of making me crazy. I bet it is, Wade. Struggling pain, struggling pain. I'm, what am I doing? I don't have to go. All right, there's a tunnel bore machine at a depot in East LS. It's out in the yard. There are guys working there around the clock and guards as well. Try to get in and out without drawing attention to yourself, lol. Hey, Lester. I miss you, even though you're a dick. Don't worry, we broke up. He was a dick. Tracy. What? Must be from a long time ago. All right. Let's go get it. Also, as far as the percentage is concerned, 
I don't really give a shit that we're paying a higher percentage to the henchmen. I'll explain why in a minute. It's just an online persona. It was satire or parody or something. I didn't mean it. Jim? You're taking me up Banum Canyon in this charcoal color land stalker to punish me for trolling you? If only someone would save me. Did he butt dial me? Stall him, kid. I'll be there soon. You know, you, you really are funny and interesting guys. I mean, any attention is uh, good attention, right? Wow, Jimmy's... Jimmy's smart if he was doing that on purpose to not make it sound like he called me. But as it relates to the take, I don't really care if the crew takes a higher percentage because if we have more of a likelihood of getting it done and we take $20 million... I mean, if I take 30% of $20 million guaranteed versus, say, 35% of $20 million, maybe, I'm taking the known variable there. The difference in $5 million is, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it also, the difference between $20 million and $30 million isn't really that big when you consider that the baseline is $20 million. That's $20 million more than I have very easy for humans to get greedy when it comes to resources if we don't actually think about it in terms of like what that quantity actually is like if you told me i have an 80 percent chance at a million dollars and a 50 percent chance at 1.5 million dollars i'm taking the 80 percent chance at the 1 million every single time because that's still a million dollars more than i currently have And if you're going to have quality people, you pay for quality work. Hey, eyes front, okay? There's no reason at all to be suspicious of anyone behind us. And if there was, he would just be there to warn you. He would definitely not kill you. Definitely would not kill you. Shut up, troll. You gave up your right to free speech when you insulted a celebrity on the internet. It was a couple of comments, some colorful language. Uh, it was harassment. You're the comedy writer. Deal with the heckle. I blocked you. You started another account. I blocked you again. You started another. But what you didn't count on is me having the money and the resources to trace your IP. I count on you having better things to do. Well, I don't. I'm a lonely man, and social media is my life. It's given me the recognition I've been denied my whole life. I can make snarky comments and glib pronouncements and lap up the adulation, banishing any form of dissent. I'm a king, and Bleeder is my kingdom. Okay, um... That's pretty sad. Don't lose sleep over it. When I'm done, the only bleeding you'll be doing is actual, like, bleeding, because then you'll be in pain. Me! <laughs> Me! Ow. Well, I brought the wrong car to this. That's gotta be them. Son. Just get over here, Papa. Papa, really? Fuck, man. You, do you think? Do you think it's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone. Are you sure? Cause the dude holds like a grudge, and, and I'm like his nemesis. I wouldn't go that far. Look, he thought you were a fat little nobody. Now he thinks you're a fat little nobody with a badass for a dad. He'll stay away. But, but I'm like his troll, Pop. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, Jimmy. Cody the Red, thank you very much for the uh, for the subscription. I appreciate Call that, me an friend. Idiot, but a troll, Jim. What's a troll? Like a joker on the internet. What sort of jokes? Sort of mean jokes. Like what? Like, someone posts something, and you're all like, that sucks, you suck, dick. Oh, so jokes that aren't funny. No, you don't get it. The humor comes with repetition. Like, you say it once, big deal. Then you say it again, and again, and again, and again, 
Okay. Like the other day, he posts this picture of his newborn, and I'm all like, damn, son, that right there is one ugly ass motherfucker of a baby. And I'm all like, my balls is prettier than that baby. And then I send him a picture of my balls. I seen Roadkill prettier than that baby. What the hell is wrong with your baby? And he's all like, actually, there's a problem with its chromosomes or something, and it's actually a miracle it survived birth. And I'm all like, it's actually a miracle I survived seeing a picture of its ugly? Enough! All right? E fuck enough! I get it. Maybe that one was a little OTT, but it's generally really good times. Yeah, good times, great times. The fucking fun you have. Can we go already? Trolling is an exercise in social reinforcement. It is not cool. Trolls should not be trolls. Using the justification of it just comes with the territory is not good enough. At the same time, it is important to think of trolls in the same way that you would think of a three-year-old child throwing a temper tantrum in a grocery store. The three-year-old child in the grocery store wants candy and you say no, and then they lay down on the ground and they throw a tantrum and make a fit. What that child is doing is trying to get attention. If you give the child energy, even if it's by yelling at it, they are getting what they want. Kids don't really differentiate energy. They just want it to come in their direction and they'll do whatever they can to get it. So if you don't give people attention for desirable behaviors, but you do give them attention for undesirable behaviors, they will often continue to do the undesirable behaviors because that's what's being reinforced through engagement. So if you engage with trolls who are very obviously working to get a rise out of you and not actually have any kind of meaningful dialogue, you do everything in your power to disrupt that communication line without responding. Very, very important to do. Trolls should troll, but if they do, your response should be to give them no energy. To remain neutral and to cut that contact. Now, if your kid's throwing a temper tantrum in the grocery store, the best thing that you can do is to engage as neutrally as possible. No affect, no energy, very calm, devoid of any affect. That tends to freak kids out. That's punishment in and of itself when they don't get attention or ignoring it. And then you give them attention when they do something desirable. So if your kid quiets down and then stands up and then walks next to your cart, you give them energy for doing that. Hey, I really appreciate that you decided to join us. Give them energy there. Move the energy in the direction of desirable behavior and away from undesirable behavior. Works with adults too. So kids are like dogs. Yes, they are. Humans are animals and kids are like dogs. It's, I, I, it blows my mind when people think it's offensive when I say that. They are literally dogs. You train humans the same way you train dogs. Here's an emotional treat for doing something desirable. It's, it's literally the same concept. Behaviorism is not separate from the human condition. It's, it, is, it works just as well on humans as it does with, with animals. Shaking up, Dad. Could you drive like a sane person? All right, the troll could come out of his cage. Screw you. It's sticky back here and oh, it hey, smells funny. Yeah, well, maybe that'll teach you to wind people up on the internet. Now get out of here. 
Look, he's been doing reality shows, but he's really good. I can meet you at Richard's Majestic Lodge. This is a suitable getaway car for the heist. Uh, no, I don't think this is what I'm going to be using. This is a little slow. Need something faster. Ricky. Ricky from Life Invader. Bro, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but it's kind of difficult for someone with a middling GPA and bad references to get a job in this climate. You gotta help me. Hey, if there's something, I'll call you. That's all I can say. Good luck out there. Ooh, the rolls might be the good might be the good getaway car. Definitely the rolls. Train. Any locomotive and flatbed car will do. I've sourced a key, a sky crane to do the pickup. Just divert the train at Davis Quartz and call one of the others to fly in. Deal with any station workers as you see fit. Alright, I want to mark this as a getaway. I gotta remember how to do that. I gotta pull off into a side area. Means maybe here. I got something we can use for the getaway. I'll call you when it's in the parking garage. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. Well, this thing will do nicely. Drives pretty smooth, as long as it's in good shape when I get it there. Hey, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to say how much I appreciate those of you that are here live. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day or night to hang out with me and watch this. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you as always for watching my videos. Make sure that you like and subscribe. I'm really grateful for your support. If you think other people could benefit from these videos, please make sure you share them. It would mean a great deal to me. I have been really appreciative of the channel growth over the last couple months, and I look forward to continued growth thanks to all of you. You have videos on parenting. My sister could use that advice. We are doing a parenting Q&A this uh, coming Thursday, similar to the relationship Q&A videos that are on YouTube already. I definitely encourage you to hang out for that or to watch the video hey, Les, after it's done. Get away cars in the garage. Good work, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a fair amount of prep work still to do. Yes, there is. Like getting this drill. Oh, oh, the car, what is that? Duke's a hazard time, baby. Oh, you want your car back? You want your car back? Violent. Oh, this baby purrs.
Alright, I'll bet this thing's gonna be a nightmare to move around. Steal the driller. Oh boy. You can't oh, oh shit, sorry. You can't be here. Back up. Yes, I can. I do what I want. Oh god, I'm yeah, damn it. Damn it. You did not, Nero. God damn it. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, let's, try, let's try this again. Damn. Hey! You gotta go! Do I? Remember, I'm a bad person. I'm sorry, man. I, this sucks. I don't want to do this. Maybe I'll scare everybody off. Lost two human lives. Come on, Michael. That thing is huge. Oh boy. Can I please tell me I can drive through here? Get lucky, get lucky. Get lucky. Get lucky. Get lucky. Ah! Can't believe that worked. Can't believe that worked. Michael. Yeah, so we got one of these uh, cutter things. What do you want me to do with it? I paid off a guard at the parking lot around from the bank. He'll open the gates for you. Okay, if you trust him. Really? The strongest fence in the entire world, right here. Oh, this is total bullshit. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh, this is. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We'll find we'll have to find another mining rig somewhere else, I guess. Just need to take this pylon out. There we go. Okay. Imagine if I did this with first person. You have got to be kidding me. Come on. How precise do I got to be with this? <laughs> we 
We'll be here all night, I guess. <laughs> oh. It's just one goddamn gate, man. Look at that. Unbelievable. We're gonna get out of this. We're gonna get out of this, chat. On the road again. Please open. Okay, thank God. <laughs> that could have been, that could have been better. It also could have been worse. Nice and smooth all the way for the rest of this trip, I think. Look at this thing. Holy crap. Nobody reported the missing drill. There's two dead security guards and a missing drill, and everybody's like, that's eh, fine. Honestly, the... The construction company probably just wants to collect on the insurance. They probably contracted by project instead of by time. So I think everybody wins here. Gotta go get what? I, I just need a Chad, I, I just like to point out that that went. I know. All right, let's well, maybe it wasn't great, but we got it done. So if we can just get a hold of the train, we'll be ready to hit it. Let's get a hold of the train then. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like you to. I'd like you to leave your car, please. Thank you. You wearing a Girl Scout uniform? Okay. Oh, shit! Okay. Wow. Oh! Do I get my CDL now? Right, go figure, Neuro. What a time to be alive. <clears throat> Not getting my class A today? All right. Also, hi, Katie. This car is a little bit better to drive. All ass up here. I feel like we've done this entire stream at night.
Damn, this thing rips. This is like that one car. There's like the Batmobile we had in Cyberpunk. It's absolutely hauling ass. Yeah, the Merc Mobile. Fresh out of a crate in a cave. It's great. Trevor, I need your help. I'm taking down that train we need for the UD, and I'm short a pilot. Fine. I think Lester arranged for the chopper to be at my airstrip. I'll go get it. Cool. Let me know when you're there, and I'll be on a headset. Incapacitate the railway workers. Can do. Don't mind me. I'm just pulling up to the rail yard in a Bugatti. OSHA inspector. And these poor guys, they got like families to go home to and shit. And I'm just about to like walk up on them and just throw hands. Now, I, I reckon I could knock them out. I don't have to kill them. What's up, buddy? You can't be here. I gotta I'm OSHA. And you just, pa you haven't passed inspection. OSHA! You Wear a hard hat. Okay. What? Cops were alerted. OSHA. Hey, T, you there? Check the fuse box next time. I'm about to flip the siding. And I'm still on the way to the chopper. Chill out. Siding's flip. Well, good for you. I still ain't at this heli. Wait for a train to stop in the sidings. Can do. Gotta make sure it can stop safely. Ah, beautiful night. Bluetooth headpiece in the right ear. Air blowing through the windows. It's a great night to be a train conductor. Hey, here comes one now. Uh-oh. T, train's coming to a stop. You in the chopper? Switch me over, yep. I'll have a little word with the conductor and unhook the couplings for you. Ooh, we got a nice little upgrade for Chopper. Look at this thing. Easy peasy. Jesus, this thing can lift. There's no way this could lift a train engine. No way. Looking good. Once you come back and get a flatbed car, we'll be all set. 
absolutely no way. Those things have got to be so unbelievably heavy. Whatever, I'll suspend my disbelief. What the hell are we... How are we going to get to... Okay. There's so many questions, man. So many questions. Pick up a flatbed carriage, can do. Great engines are around 50 tons on average. Jeez. Fifty tons. Yeah, this thing could carry all the gold we have. So wait, there are literally choppers like this that exist that can do this? That could lift a locomotive engine off the ground like that and carry it? Because that's absolutely freaking incredible. I was going to say 30,000 pounds is 15 tons. <clears throat> if a locomotive engine is 50 tons, that's 100,000 pounds. Perfect. You said you wanted a train? I got you a train, Lester. Excellent. I'll let the others know we have everything we need. We'll meet at the strip club. You will, huh? All right. You know what that means? Ooh, Patricia. Oh. Just to say... The truest of hearts break the cleanest. Just to say that you will always in my heart. My heart is full because you are in it. Be good. What we have together, it was very special. I love you, but I am a wife, and a wife must be with her husband. Patricia. Shit, T! There's some Chinese guys looking for... I already asked. I already got that. Alright. Next episode, fam. I'll meet you at the strip club. 
you've been watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for taking the time to watch part 22. Part 23, we're going for the heist. It's going to be good stuff. So if you're binging, hop on over. If you're not binging and you're doing these as they come out, we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Appreciate you. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.